Are you ready to have your mind blow by the latest housing market trends? That's exactly what we're gonna do in this video today. We're gonna dive deep into the data and reveal the truth behind the decline in the home prices in Boise and the surrounding areas. The numbers don't lie and they're gonna reveal a shocking decline in the home values that many have been trying to ignore. And the market has shifted and it's time for everyone to take notice. This is not just a temporary dip, it's a trend that's headed downward. The reality is that declining market presents an opportunity for buyers to take advantage of lower prices and for sellers to adjust their expectations. Welcome to the Good News Real Estate channel where we talk about real, honest, data-driven events here in Boise and beyond. Last year, only a select few agents were talking about the drop in home prices month over month, but so many were talking about how we're still up year over year. Now something has changed and what is it? With Boise prices being down year over year as well as month over month, Treasure Valley agents will no longer be able to hide behind the true state of the housing market. The media as well will probably start talking about how home prices are declining year over year. Let's jump into the data and see what I'm talking about. We're gonna take a look at year over year home prices in the US, Boise, Twin Falls, and then Coeur d'Alene. The US as a whole is up 1% year over year. And let's say the market flatlines and the home values stay the same the U.S. home values will start to show a decline of 31,000 by the month of May. And that's only if it flatlines. If it declines, then we're gonna see an even bigger drop year over year. Now, Boise is down 6% year over year, according to Redfin. And by May, if it flatlines, it will show an $80,000 decrease year over year, which amounts to about a 15% decrease. Look at this line. It's on the downward trend. Now, Twin Falls, Redfin is showing a 78,000 decrease year over year by May, which amounts to a 19% correction. Coeur d'Alene is showing a 6% as well for 2023. It's also on the downward trend. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say it levels. They also will start seeing a massive decline year over year. Agents and sellers will no longer be able to disguise that the housing market's never been better than ever by overlooking the month over month declines with the year over year declines now starting to pop up everywhere. My question I want to know from you is what will the reaction of agents, sellers, and buyers be when they start seeing this news? Again, these agents have been able to disguise home prices are doing great, the market's never healthier by overlooking the month over month declines. Now let's think about 2020 when the lockdowns first happened and the whole economy briefly stopped. Buyers got scared and completely jumped out of the market. Sellers were freaking out, throwing their houses on the market. Well, except for me, I did buy a house when the lockdowns happened. The media has the power to start scaring people or getting people excited. And if the media starts picking up this decline year over year, what's that gonna do to people? Will it scare people? Will it wake up sellers to the reality of the housing market? Or will buyers move off the sidelines and get pushed into the market? What do you think? Another thing that we often hear is that we're seeing less list listings being put on the market and the inventory is down, but our sales are also at the lowest level they've been since 2010. So the argument for the inventory only stands if we're seeing the same amount of demand. Okay, how do you determine our supply according to our demand? You look at the month's worth of inventory and let's say there's about 1200 homes for, for sale, but only a hundred buyers are buying a house a month or 3,600 homes are for sale and 300 buyers are buying a month. That would mean that we have about 10 months of supply for housing on the market. Redfin does these calculations for us, so let's see what these three markets tell us. Boise has 7.3 months supply of inventory according to this graph. This would mean it's in a buyer's market. Anything under 6% is considered a seller's market. Anything over 6% is considered a buyer's market. Twin Falls metro area is showing 9.3 months worth of supply on the market. And Coeur d'Alene is at a whopping 14.3 months worth of supply on the market. So although we hear inventory is low, we see that demand is even lower. And even though this article from the Mortgage Bankers Association states that mortgage applications for purchases increased 28% from a week prior, it's also saying we are still down 35% year over year. What causes inventory to increase? Low demand, hardship, tightening lender requirements. And that's what we've been trying to tell you guys. If you are a buyer and you're tired of waiting, be aggressive on your offers. Don't get emotionally attached to one house. Be ready and be patient. Just like we're patiently waiting for you to hit the subscribe and like button. With that taken care of, let's get into the next thing. Have you heard that people are still moving to Boise in droves? Although there may be truth behind that, let's look at what's happening in the California market. Now the California Association of Realtors put this graph together where it breaks down the difference between their inventory and their homes sold. Remember, we can somewhat gauge what the idle market is going to look like 
based on how homes are selling down in California. And according to this graph, all the regions in California right now are showing home sales down by double digits. With Southern California being down by 48%, it's not due to inventory. Because when we look at the inventory here, it's almost up 90% year over year. That's just one region, California. Look at other spots like the San Francisco Bay Area, it's down 37% and the active listings are up 85%. So again, it's not an inventory issue right now, it's a buyer demand issue right now. We didn't see the flood of inventory from foreclosures, repos, all that until 2009, 2010, after 2007 crash happened. And how many of you guys have heard that builders have been pulling back on permits here in the Boise area? That is a little true, but there's also a lot of homes that haven't hit the market that are still being finished. They will eventually hit the market when they're finished, but with them pulling back on starting new homes and new residential developments, think about the jobs and the job market. Do you think that will hurt our local economy? We're talking about plumbers, electricians, fr framers, concrete workers. And how many of these hardworking people went out and bought new trucks, trailers, razors, thinking that the wave of work wasn't gonna stop. All these people who make commissions, selling cars, trailers, homes, loans, etc. we haven't been able to even see the full effect from these sectors getting hurt in 2022. So if builders continue to pull back and prevent themselves from building more homes, what will we see in 2023? If the Boise housing market saw declines in home values up to 20% in 2022, when the market was quote unquote healthy, what's it gonna look like if the unemployment rate increases? We can't forget that already in the first three weeks of 2023, big tech has come out and said that they've started laying off 55,000 employees. This is only the first month of 2023. I mean, what do you think it's gonna look like? Let us know in the comment below. The low interest rate argument of people not selling because they locked in a low interest rate only applies if they can make their payment. But what happens if they have to relocate because of a job, they lose their job or their income gets cut? Already seen people who bought in cash or finance within the last two years sell their houses for a loss. So do you think all this is a recipe for further declines or increase in buyer demand? Let us know.